What's all this supposed to be? This? This is ice. This is what happens to water when it gets too cold. This? This is Ken. This is what happens to people when they get too sexually frustrated. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the next kind of episode four. I am Michael. I don't know what I'm doing. Gains. I'm Casey. Take charge, Coglin. <laughs> God, I'm trying to do like nine things at once here. I almost had it. You should just stop and try doing eight things at once. I know I should. Well, you know, I I blame part of it on the fact that um, <laughs> that use uh, not use stream a VLC does not have standard controls. I'm pressing spacebar. Nothing's happening. Well. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. I'll fix it in post like we always do. Keystrokes attack. Oh, what's the big news, Casey? What's going on? Tell me what's going on. What's going on in your life? What's 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 next to Kanish? This week, I don't know if you've heard, we put a small car on another planet. <laughs> you put it like that. <laughs> it's I swear, you put it like that and it's more awesome than it really is. It's got laser beams for pulverizing rocks, mm -hmm. for rock pulverizing needs. Um, uh, cameras, lots of cameras and 3D cameras and video and everything for all your Instagram needs. <laughs> and um, uh, it's got some sort of, uh, I guess, render engine. So it's actually going to like do some Photoshop and clean up and then upload those images to Instagram. <laughs> So yeah, we put a nuclear powered trailblazer on Mars. It was pretty awesome. If um on a G3 uh processor with like what, 2 gigs of RAM or something like that? Uh, it's something. It less it's it's effectively uh what's inside or somebody was saying it's what's inside a uh, Airport Express. <laughs> I guess it is, yeah. Um so sweet. We got at an airport express with wheels uh, roaming around the red planet, checking <laughs> shit for us. And yet, oddly enough, we still can't get live updates from NBC on the Olympics. I know. Embassy total fail. I mean, more fail than normal because, yeah, we're getting yeah more recent updates from Mars than we are from <laughs> the NBC. Could you imagine if if people the reason why that NBC is doing this is for ratings, which I understand, but it still sucks. But can you imagine if people actually cared more about Mars than they did about the Olympics? Because then what would happen is say, oh no, wait, we have to delay the entire landing because it's not eight o'clock yet. Right. Yeah. Exactly. If they waited, or no, I don't know, because it wouldn't even be on Sunday. You know, they'd wait till like Monday night, prime time, eight o'clock or. Something like that, um, and just postpone it, and then everybody on Twitter would be like, "We landed!" Ah, spoilers, you know, and <laughs> spoilers. I swarm in the chat room says we should do the Olympics on Mars. Yeah, apparently, it would work a lot better. We just throw our Olympic athletes up there with an airport express, and we'd be good. <laughs> oh, apparently, my company that I work for actually has uh, the radio. Um, chips on that to really powered car we put up there so did you sign the chips before you sent them out you should have i actually i had no idea until you know the the whole um it landed and everybody was um talking about it on monday and our cfo or coo said that yo you know you know the the radio for both the rover and the orbiter those are our chips powering those radios. Wow. Uh, oh, well then, that's pretty awesome. And apparently we also have chips um, orbiting Mercury, Venus, and Jupiter. Oh, I thought you were going to say Uranus. No, not yet. We haven't conquered all the planets. But um, that, that's pretty awesome because, I mean... It's awesome that to say like our company has chips in the iPhone and iPad, but then to say like, oh yeah, you know that little Curiosity rover. Oh yeah, you know our parts in that too. <laughs> so yeah, all right, we landed on Mars, and what, what was funny is that like for geeks like us, we stayed up late, we watched the thing to make sure 
that everything went fine. And it was just amazing, not just we landed on Mars. I mean, we've landed on Mars before. That in itself is not the big deal. The big deal is how we did it. Oh, yeah, exactly. The uh, the sky crane. Yeah, the sky crane, which uh, they said, it's it, the, the video is called Seven Minutes of Hell. So if you haven't seen it, just Google it and find it and watch it. It's amazing what they had to do with this thing. Everything had to be timed perfectly. Everything had to be just right on the dot and dropped perfectly and the, and the right amount of fuel and the, oh, just everything. And, and it went great. Yeah, it went totally according to plan. No part of that should have. I mean, so they, they, the thing enters the atmosphere and I guess the minute it enters the atmosphere, the orbiter loses contact or we lose contact. Yeah. So contact and so that seven minutes of hell is that we don't know what's going on and they're just nasa's strictly relying on tones mm-hmm. uh, like you know the smallest bit of data just a tone to to signify that it's reached certain milestones in the the landing process and so first it it enters in the atmosphere it loses its heat shield from the bottom it looks like a little flying UFO. Sol- like a total, what, 1930s, 40s UFO. Uh-huh. And so it loses the heat shield, and then a parachute comes out to slow it down, and then it throws out some weights to slow it down more. And then finally, the, um, I guess the rover, or no, 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 the top and the parachute come off. And then that's when the rover and its, its top stage, uh, the actual sky crane, are are coming to the surface and the sky crane has rockets eight rockets splayed out like a spider and they start shooting down towards the surface to slow its descent so they're you know pushing against kind of the the surface and the gravity with those rockets and so that slows the descent and once it's kind of slowed down to a, a safe enough and they got a safe enough distance the rover actually starts to dislodge out of the stage um, by cables, like three or four cables down. And once um, the rover actually touches down and the stage can uh, gather that the cables have gone limp because the rover is touching the ground, it then dismounts the cables and flies off meters, 400 meters away to just go crash land itself somewhere far, far safe away from the rover. Like, just an insane, like, what? Like, any part of that process, you're just like, oh, oh, yeah, and then, oh, oh, uh, yeah, like, that should happen. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it just. And, of course, the very first thing that happens is um, the Curiosity starts sending out pictures of, of where it landed. And, and, of course, all the Photoshoppers get involved and they take pictures, uh, they add pictures of the xenomorph and the tardis and and just all these like the little martian guy from bugs bunny and it was hilarious i have to say but but what was bugging me about the whole thing is that the next day people were on the internet were saying i'm really tired of hearing about mars oh screw those people like i can't get enough i mean from from like you said from the memes which are hilarious it's all the photoshops and everything to the actual you know, reaction shots, like just looking at the reaction shots of the NASA control room, like Mm -hmm. is heartwarming, you know, in its own right. (laughs) And then um, reading up on, you know, just all of the the actual process and what they went into it and what what now they have to do going forward. Because really, you know, this is a feat in itself, but that's really the beginning. Mm -hmm. Now job starts. Um, gathering info and everything about the planet. So, the uh, the funniest picture that I had seen of the control room where everybody is cheering, there was a there was a fake like news uh, caption on the bottom. It says NASA <laughs> defeats twenty five man heroic dragon soul. <laughs> That's fantastic. But, I need to. Apparently, I haven't seen nearly enough memes, and I thought I've seen them all. Yeah. So. Go back and look at more memes. Well, you know what it's like when you're doing a, a raid or heroic and you finish it for the first time. Oh well, yeah. I I don't know if I'm you know actually standing up out of my chair, but I'm I'm definitely relieved. <laughs> well, no, I've never gotten out of my chair during a, a a raid, but yeah, I've I've cheered several times. 
Yeah, yeah. So uh, the future of Mars right now is that there, there are some predictions that we're going to go there in 10 or 15 years. And if we do, it's going to be a one-way trip, which really doesn't make much sense to me because if you can build a ship to get there, why can't you just build that same ship to like maybe park in orbit for three years and then go back? So park in orbit while we build a you know station or refinery or something to yeah. on the planet with, because uh, they're saying it would have to be a one way mission because a it takes enough like all these rovers that we send out they never come back well, for yeah. the same reason it takes enough planning and and tools and resources and time just to get it there once and then to get it back like. You'd have to pack, you know, a rocket with enough fuel and everything for two trips, as well as um, some sort of thing that could take back off the planet. Because a lot of these rockets that go there, or you know, orbiters or, or rovers or whatever, you know, they're they're multi-stage and they and they break apart, mm -hmm. and well, you know, the last bit is either on the planet for good or crash landed somewhere else. You know, they're never meant to take back off so again you'd have to have fuel you'd have to have something that isn't meant to like fully break down but you know come is can sure. come back it doesn't dislodge its heat shield you know it keeps all that shit on because it's going to need it again i mean of course i guess you could say the same thing about computer processors and memory like oh nobody would need more than what was it 256 64k well, I'm thinking more along the lines of this. Like, if you can build a ship to get there, and I, I forgot where I said this before, but if you can build a ship to get there with, let's say, two engines, right, and a certain mm -hmm. amount of fuel, build it with two more so that it's it stays parked in orbit, and then a couple of years goes goes by, you build what you have to do on Mars, and then just like with the lunar lander, the lunar module on the moon, you shoot back up to your mothership, the Sulaco, <laughs> and then you go home. So, and because people are saying it's a one-way trip, God, man, it's like, I don't know if I would do that. if To colonize Mars and never see a beach again? No, but there's a lot of people who would do that because you would be the initial uh, wave. You would be the catalyst. You would be the one, you know, forging the way and making it possible for others to come back in your stead. If mm -hmm. you're the one that they send there on a one-way mission... To, to do whatever to learn more or to help build or whatever you know in time obviously we'll get up the technology and resources and everything to to be able to go back and forth but i don't see that happening for probably not in my lifetime so but there are tons of people you know in nasa or and i would even think is you know some everyday nerds who would be like hell yeah i would go if it was a one-way suicide mission I would totally go because I would be in history books forever. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. It, it's a tough call because like, I still haven't even like been to Italy. I haven't been to London. I haven't been, there are so many places that I haven't been. I know. <laughs> you know, and the way I'm going to go to Mars. And you can say, well, you know what? You're going to freaking Mars. Yeah. But I would like to see a couple places first. I'd like to go to Germany. I'd like to, I'd like to go to France. Mm-hmm. And then maybe I would go. Yeah, I know. But, but the one thing that I hope happens with this mission, maybe it won't, but maybe it'll wake people up and, and become interested in space again. Because um, Neil deGrasse Tyson is putting together Cosmos again. As, as I think we might have mentioned this on the show before. So that's coming out. Now it's coming out, I think, in 2013, which is fine. This this renewed interest in science and space and everything has really got to pick up more, like it did in the or like in the late seventies, early eighties, and people have to, in my opinion, just put aside all their petty crap and and focus more about what we can do as people, not any all this. Oh God, there are a lot of things that I can think of mm -hmm. that are petty, in my opinion. Well, you're laughing. No, no. <laughs> In any case, one Jurassic task to another. Wow. So what's going on with this thing? 
So a uh, millionaire decides, you know what? I really like Jurassic Park, and I really like dinosaurs. I think I'm going to make some. <sighs> okay, so he wants to actually clone a dinosaur and put it in a park, and people can see it, and the park will be run by Silicon Graphics machines with little girls at no Unix. Nothing. This all sounds legit. Nothing could ever wrong with this <laughs> you know just to have some security guy named newman and we'll all be set exactly and he he looks about the same uh, size and physique as newman <laughs> and newman was able to outrun stuff pretty well right so i think he's got a fighting chance oh he wasn't oh that's right no he um he's going with the um the same people that cloned a sheep to, to try and clone a, a dinosaur I gotta say, if you're gonna do it, why not start small? Did we clone that woolly mammoth yet? They were talking about it. No, I don't think we did. Or if they did, it was very uh, on the down low. Mm, all right. Well, I, uh, they said it's gonna take a long time, I suppose, to get it right because you don't want a bunch of like mutant Ripleys running around on a, on an island. We will. You know, the first batch will be like sing an arm or have down syndrome or something and then the second batch you know i mean they they got a skin problem and then maybe third or fourth batch of dinosaurs you're like all right <laughs> acid for blood got it sweet now i can move on to making my titanic look i gotta say if they cloned a dinosaur man i would look all right here's here's something would you if you were on mars and found out that we cloned a dinosaur man i'd be pissed i wouldn't i'd be like Awesome. I left that planet just in time. <laughs> now they dinosaurs over there, man, that shit is gone. I know. Hell. It's like the whole life will find a way thing, and then all of a sudden you've got dinosaurs running around San, Di San Diego, where you're from. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm going to have just to watch just... Jurassic Park 2 again. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I haven't seen three. Well, all right. So, what do you think? What do you What do you think the the reality of this will be within twenty years? Um, twenty years maybe. You think? Uh, well, it depends on how much DNA do they really have. I mean, do they have like a lot of data that they can work off of, or does he have like just enough for one clone? And if it doesn't work out, then he's fucked. I you know, don't of. know. I did not look that up. I, and I didn't. Um, I don't think it says it in that article, but no. then they probably don't say that either. But um, I'd imagine you know that unless they can like thin it out somehow, say they have like one fossil that's got reasonable data in it, maybe I don't know. They can thin it out with water or something. <laughs> <laughs> Watered down dinos. <laughs> I'm going to write that down before we forget. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, anyways, while that dude's making his dinosaurs, what's Valve making? Valve is is making, well, I don't know if they're making apps, but they're going to expand beyond games, which I think is quite interesting and not really unexpected considering the success of all these app stores um, that that are around. So... For Steam to to break out of games, I think this is a good uh, good idea for them. Yeah, um, I agree. It, it's a logical conclusion. I mean, we just talked on the Infinite Loop show, but yeah. uh, it's kind of a logical conclusion because they are, in a sense, an app store now. Sure. Just category. And so how are you going to expand beyond that? Once you've kind of conquered that category, which they kind of have, um, you need to keep growing. So how do you do that? Uh, you put more stuff in there. Well, there are a lot of games that they could go after. I mean, just tons and tons and tons of games that they can do. Um, I mean, if think about it. If, if they made an emulator, look, there's the main emulator out right now, the, the multi-arcade machine emulator. If they were able to, to um, capitalize on that, I think that would be great. Yeah, if they had some NES or... Um you know, older console emulators and ROMs, that would be fantastic. Sure. Maybe you pay like a subscription fee for the emulator and I don't know, or you pay by the ROM, but that would be fantastic. Yeah. I would be over that. <laughs> uh, 
Um, another thing that's going to be all over is um, Square is going to be all over Starbucks. We talked about this on the Infinite Loop show also, but what? Starbucks. What the hell? I know. Uh, <laughs> Starbucks is going to start taking Square payments. And you said that you don't know if it's going to be everywhere. Well, no, it's going to be at all the Starbucks because Starbucks as a oh. whole is partnering with Square. I don't know if they're going to be busting out iPads with the dongle and throwing away their cash registers. Um, right. It's going to be more for – so they'll still take, you know, MasterCard, Visa, cash, whatever. If you don't use an NFC, nothing changes for you really. Mm -hmm. um, but I think this will be more in the NFC space. So if you have the, the Square app on your phone or device um, and you have it set up with your payment info and uh, geofencing and you walk into a Starbucks and they have it set up, you know, with geofencing, um, you can just say, hey, you know, I charge me for whatever and uh, I'm within this, you know, set vicinity mm -hmm. or they might have one of those pads at the register where you where you tap it for um, really close contact. But yeah, so you I, tap that. I well, I don't go to Starbucks a whole lot, but I think if I did and I had NFC in my iPhone five, maybe I would be all over that tapping mm, it. Tap that. Uh, speaking of dinosaurs, I probably should have put this above, but uh, the new Doctor Who season, season 7 trailer is up. And everybody, all the Doctor Who fans, the Whovians, as they're called, are all over this like wet on rice. And the reason why dinosaurs is such a big deal about this is because there's a there's this amazing shot of Matt Smith as the Doctor. And he's like, dinosaur is on a spaceship. Like He's astounded by the whole thing. That's fantastic. I need to see this. I haven't seen it yet. Um, <gasps> I, I'm a, not a good Whovian at all. I'm behind on my <laughs> Doctor Who and everything, but I need to see this trailer. That's fantastic. Um, I just a couple of other uh, Doctor Who minor uh, parts is that um, the 50th anniversary uh, special is um, is uh, under production right now. They did the run, I believe they did the run through last week, and they, film the old older doctors to come back for that or Tom Baker is coming is that, back is that true yeah so don't but I thought like every time they have a new doctor the old doctor has to die so how does that happen well is the old, you know Yoda and uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi all like you know a ghost image in the background or what oh no 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 well because they're time travelers they can sort of intercept each other's timelines at some point it's true so oh. I know that Tom Baker is going to be in it. Um, the The last I heard is that Chris Eccleston um, has not signed, but but might. Um, David Tennant has not yet said yes. I'm going to be in it. Everybody's like dying to see if he's going to be in it. And um, uh, what else? There's some other things about it. I don't remember what, but but that's all I know right now. And then there are the Doctor Who movie that's supposed to be worked on right now. Uh, that might not be out until next year, but that's going to have Matt Smith in it for sure. Nice. He is by far the sexiest doctor. You think, think. so? Yeah. He is my favorite. More than David Tennant? Oh, way more. Good oh. God, way more. All right. I guess you're into bow ties. <laughs> I'm into bow ties and hair. <laughs> bow ties and hair. Okay. <laughs> and then from <laughs> from one crazy show to another, oh my God, do you remember the X-Files? A little bit, I think. I used to be so into that show when it was first on for the first few years, and it got frustrating to watch that show because you would wait all season for answers to something that was like last season or, or the season before, and then a season would go through and there would be nothing. And then it got silly. The reason I'm bringing this up is because it, after all these years, it turns out that, that Gillian Anderson and David Duchovny are apparently a couple now. Now, whoa! I had no idea. I'm not. Now, a, well, I'm now not a, they. Uh, this Skype thing is pissing me off. I will stop now. Go ahead. Okay, I didn't have anything important to say. Oh, okay. <laughs> we have to figure out the Skype problem. Um, yeah, it, it it took the show started in '92. I think so. It was '91 or '92 or something like that. So it took them all this time to finally be a couple. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I think 
probably like he was single, but she wasn't, and then she was single, but then he wasn't. You know, like some high school couple, and they just couldn't get together. But and then he was a sex addict, and so you know. And so I'm not into the whole gossip thing, but I just thought from uh, a science fiction point of view, this was actually quite funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Truth but, is there, and it's that he wants her. Yes. Uh, tell us about, and I, I put this up there for you. Oh. This is all you. I'm just going to sit back, and I'm just going to listen to you talk. Anybody... Uh watches and this started as kind of a um a prank uh by a little podcast called NSFW on the twit.tv network. Uh Brian Brushwood and Justin Robert Young wanted to um not only take over the iBook store with their own iBook. They've been trying to do this a few times with the scam school books and it never really got into or if it did, it didn't break. It, I think the first one got into the top ten, didn't break the top five, and the second one I don't think even got into the top ten. Or I might have those reversed. In any case, they thought they'd try one more time with a uh, parody novel of Fifty Shades of Grey. They noticed that once Fifty Shades of Grey had come out, on especially on the iBook store, everything with Fifty Shades of Grey at number one and everything below that uh, was either a sequel or a parody or somebody clearly trying to capitalize on the success of Fifty Shades of Grey. Whereas they all have similar titles, mm. they're very similar content, and the covers are very similar in color scheme and, and context and composition. So Brian Brushwood was just like, well, why can't we do this? So they did pretty much. Um, they had their chat realm, the listeners of NSFW, send in uh, a chapter each. And so I don't think everybody wrote, but a, mo a lot of people contributed. And so this was like a crowdsourced novel of erotica. Uh, uh, you know, they came up with, the, the characters and the main storyline together in the show, in the podcast, and then just had people go out and, and write a chapter each, and they put it all together, and it actually built a, I guess, a cohesive novel, you know, and I mean, not to, like, the point was to write badly, because, and I have no idea, but it, it <laughs> appears that Fifty Shades of Grey is not well written, probably much like uh, t uh, Twilight. Um, not, you know, a literary masterpiece, but whatever, it's top of the charts. So, so not well written, full of sex, full of, um, silly NSFW memes and, um, kind of inside jokes. And, but they made it all serious. No a actual names were used. Uh, they put up like a, an actual girl uh, author name that was fake and a uh, a legit cover that looked just like Fifty Shades of Grey. Everything they put it up for ninety nine cents. Um, by the end of the day, it had reached number four on iTunes um, on the iBook Store, which is pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. and, right, but even more impressive, it stayed there for the next five days. Now this is. No name, made up author, no name book, came out of nowhere, and hits number four. And they they essentially like game the system. Now they couldn't break into the top three because, well, the top three consisted of Fifty Shades of Grey and its two sequels, whatever Fifty Shades of Freedom or whatever the hell I don't know. Um, and so. They beat out all the other parody books, um, but couldn't beat out the original, which is still, again, insane. And they did this totally by gaming the system and trolling that, you know, book, and they almost beat it. Um, it fell out of the top four, I think, five days later, and then seven days later, it was at number six. So it really didn't fall too far. They made... I think over seventy five hundred dollars or something. 
Yeah. Over $7,000 in profit. Um, over like 2,000 reviews, almost all <laughs> four star reviews, mostly from, you know, uh, chat <laughs> W fans. But, um, but like really in a, a crazy kind of experiment. And I don't know. I mean, it was just very bizarre. After seeing, you know, the, the success, I would. After knowing these guys and watching their show, I would think their their actual attempt, the the scam school book that they first did, would have been better. Like because those were legit books with real content that they put out, that they worked hard on and developed and edited and polished. And those two books are legit original content, you know, that they made themselves, and they really, you know, weren't successful. But with this, you know, piece of like crap, trash writing that is just a mockery of everything, they make way more money and get way higher in the charts. Mm -hmm. It almost kind of makes you question the whole system. <laughs> They're still number six, by the way. I just checked. Oh, uh, okay. So, I mean, almost two weeks later, they're still within the top 10. Like, that's just insane. They're still making money and with a piece of crap that they're selling for 99 cents. I, it's it's way cheaper than 51 or 50 Shades of Grey as well. So, and here's the thing in the beginning, it was all the NSFW fans like you and me that bought the book to support them and to, and to sort of push this whole thing. Now, I'm sure a lot, I, I would think the majority of the NSFW fans have paid for the book and, and did their thing. And, and now, who's buying the book? It's still number six. Are these people that look, that, that maybe buy the top 10 anyway, or they're looking for something new, so like new, some new erotica or something like that, and they go, ooh, the Diamond Club, this looks really cool, and they buy it anyway? I'm sure that has to be it, because there aren't that many, because they, they sold over seven thousand dollars in profit so that's a dollar a person there aren't that many nsfw fans so i think after like day two this has to be primarily just normal random people you know who have i guess like have already filled up on 50 shades of gray and meat or something yeah so uh, I got to give uh, give props to the NSFW guys for doing this and, and to everybody that contributed to the book. And uh, gaming the system is, is exactly what they did. I don't think too many people would have been able to pull this off. Yeah. I I don't know. It's it's kind of, it's just, it's crazy any way you look at it, really. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the quest log. <laughs> Quest over. Uh, the big news today is that uh, Blizzard put out a, a release saying that they had an internal security breach. Some encrypt. I don't know if it was all passwords, but um, there are at least some encrypted passwords, and they were encrypted, by the way. Um, they were stolen. Uh, the The answer for your secret question was stolen, uh, and and some other things. The, 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 the issue that I'm having with this isn't so much with Blizzard, but if you take all these pieces of all the information that came from all these other security breaches and posted publicly on the... Oh, by the way, this information, so far as I know, as of right now, is not posted publicly. But I'm sure that there are people that have all this information. They cluster it all together. You can write a simple PHP script to just look at all the emails that they're attached to and, and, and essentially have some sort of snapshot of people's accounts. That's the scary part of this whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think once they have the security questions, and most of those security questions are generic across, you know, all sites and all accounts. You know, not just Blizzard, but like your bank or or who else. Um, and so whatever you answer is probably going to be similar for another site. So once they have that, well, yay. Yeah, I don't know because now I'm starting to get a little paranoid. I did, uh, there was a, a Yahoo breach about two weeks ago. Um, and so I looked at that, my email, uh, my email address was not in there. Yours was not in there. I checked for you. And I also checked some friends and they were all not in there, which is, which is good. But, uh, this, this, this issue of like, like, like you said, you have similar passwords. I don't, 
But if you have similar passwords across all these things, you can essentially guess somebody's password, especially the ones where you have like a root. Um, I know people that do this, they have like a root password and then they add like FB for Facebook and then GM for Gmail. That's about as lame yeah. as you can get because if somebody, it's, you might as well just say that your password is one, two, three, four, five. Because if you have the root, then you know how to get into everything else. So, uh, I don't know, change your passwords. Last pass, get on something, because uh, these are happening way too much. Mm -hmm. uh, are we talking about this EA Bioware thing again? Um, well, we talked about it a little bit on Infinite Loop Show, but we can talk about it just really briefly now. Um, EA and Bioware are uh, colluding to revive the Ultima franchise in Ultima Forever, which will be for, wait for it, iOS. <laughs> Is it going to be an iOS exclusively or just first? Um, they, I don't think they really mention anything else, but um, I'm assuming first and then possibly other second, but mm -hmm. they just got iOS in the... And you've got a couple of other iOS game uh, mentions here. What else do you have? Yeah, I was looking at this and then I found a couple more um, that I just thought were interesting. There's a new, um, two new games on the iOS store uh, now uh, for iPhone, I believe. Um, one is Oregon Trail, the director's cut, which is essentially a, a new modern day take on Oregon Trail where you and a group of friends are driving across the country in a station wagon fighting off zombies and all the, the all the same things apply you know you're not only battling the elements and the zombies but you're also battling each other and your own body you know to stay alive um, <laughs> kind of an interesting uh, take it's still in, in horrible 8-bit and uh, just extreme col neon colors. It it looks fantastic. Do you still um, die of dysentery? Yes, yes. Um, so there's that, and now there's also a new Pitfall game uh, for iOS, which not an 8-bit or anything. Actually, looks very modern, kind of 3D uh, platformer where you get a full. Uh, I think it's a full 360 view, or it might be um, uh, just a three-quarter view, but. Um, yeah, so it's a new take on Pitfall where it's it's a little bit more modern, not like I said, not you know retro eight bit, but um, yeah. This looks pretty badass. I'm looking at the screenshots now. Oh, there's a motorcycle. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Um, I remember the day that I I <laughs> I, I went to the mall by myself because I was I was under uh, the age that I could drive, so I had to take the bus to the mall. I saved up money from, I think it was um, mowing lawns or something like that. <clears throat> Went to the mall, bought Pitfall, came home and played it for a week and a half straight or something like that. I did that exact same story for The Sims on for PC. That makes sense. Sims are huge. <clears throat> Excuse me. I never really got into The Sims. Oh, I did because I'm a total girl. <laughs> because you're a girl? Well, I, I got into The Sims, but not for the game. Like, I almost never played the game as it was supposed to. I got into it for <laughs> just strictly to build and decorate houses. Oh, okay. I got into, like, um, where you could, for the PC version, there were a lot of hacks where you could type in codes and have an unlimited money and... Um, you know, so you wouldn't have any of those limitations. And then I found out how you could make your own uh, custom textures and maps to customize the furniture and load it in. And so then I got all into that. <laughs> wow. Do you have screenshots of these? No, oh, God, no. This is all on, like, my compact Vasario that doesn't live anymore. So what about that new Sims game? Are you going to get that? Uh, probably not. I'm pretty, I don't know. I don't. A, I don't have time to to get that into it anymore, with especially with the customizing and making my own patterns and everything. But sure. it does it doesn't interest me the same way anymore. Well, what is interesting is that there's going to be a new Xbox 720 or whatever it's going to call before Christmas of 2013. 
or March 2014. <laughs> Uh, are you now? I know you're a uh, you're a PlayStation fangirl. I am. Right? Do you care yeah. about this Xbox 720? Shit, no. Okay, why not? Um, to me, it just seems like more of the same. I mean, they they've been iterating the current Xbox 360, and you know, with the addition of the Connect, it's pretty interesting. And then for the same <laughs> console, it evolved quite a bit. But um, I don't see what what really they can put into the 720 that's going to top that astronomically you know i they they've put i mean they've already put internet explorer in there what else do you need people well the way that i'm seeing it is there needs to be an amazing engine inside uh, there needs to be something that completely blows away not anything that we've seen on current consoles but even on the pc yeah, yeah, exactly. You need to make a reason for people to get this mm -hmm. other besides, you know, building their own gaming box. Mm -hmm. There is speculation as to whether or not Xbox or, or Microsoft, I should say, is finally going to break down and put it in a Blu-ray drive. I think that they should because at this point, well, you're rolling your eyes, but I, I think that the reason why they have to is because the games are going to be so huge. Like, I mean, they had it on the PlayStation where like Final Fantasy 13 was on Blu-ray and it had to be. Um, these games, if you're going to put them out on the 720, are going to be massive. You can't put them on DVDs anymore. No. Yeah. And and really, it's it's silly. I mean, the Xbox has never been ahead of the curve as far as extra hardware features goes. That's mm -hmm. always kind of domain of the PlayStation. Um, whereas, you know, the PlayStation was the first console that could play DVDs. And so it became everybody's first DVD player mm -hmm. in there. And then the PS3 was the first console to play Blu-ray. So it became most people's first Blu-ray player. Sure. You know, and they, they always kind of threw in that little extra thing. Whereas Xbox, like, you just always have to pay more to get what should come included. You got to pay more to have a hard drive. You got to pay more to, to have a year subscription. You got to then pay more uh, to get wireless. You got to pay more, you know, and it just every little bit they break off as an accessory, whereas PlayStation has almost always included all that sure. in price. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I'm a little concerned about, um, I mentioned the Blu ray drive, is that. Because these games are so big that it's going to take a while to download them, but uh, with the, the the prices of hard drives dropping, is it practical to put these games on discs anymore? If not, what's going to wind up happening to GameStops and such? And we had spoken about this on the show before, I think like episode one or something. But what's going to happen to to that market, the the hard, the like the the pressed disc game market? Um, I don't know, and. I don't know if I care really um, at this point, you know, because I mean, I download or stream most of my stuff, and and anybody who uses Steam is used to that. So then, if they do away with the physical media entirely and just put a beefy hard drive in it, and assume that people have a decent connection, I mean, everybody says, you know, oh well, you can't stream or download Blu-rays. That's just insanity. It's too much data. But, I mean, we're, we're almost there now with Steam games. You're streaming or downloading those, and mm -hmm. they're not, a lot of the Steam games aren't, you know, little 8-bit things. Mm -hmm. um, they're pretty big. And on the um, Apple iTunes Store, you can download Blu-ray quality. Um, and I believe on Netflix, there's some HD or Blu-ray uh, stuff you can stream. So, I mean, it's coming and maybe we're not there yet, but it's it's gonna be you know here before you know it, and the technology is gonna be there before you know it, to where we'll be streaming and downloading Blu-rays and not thinking anything of it. At some point, yeah. Um, I don't think we're ready quite yet because there's still some people like you and I have high-speed internet connections. There's still some people that don't, and right. so. There is nothing that's going to be able to fix that in the people that are in rural areas. There are some people that are still using satellite for their internet connections. There are some people that's that are still w with like phone modems. There, there oh, actually people... are. So I feel like. <laughs> well, <laughs> so I I don't think that discs are in any immediate danger, but I think within ten years they're going to be. 
Oh, I'd say within five. Think I think so? it's going to be sooner than that. They don't need to wait until everyone is ready in terms of bandwidth. They just need to wait until the majority is ready. As soon as it reaches, you know, 51% of people have high-speed internet or better, that's good enough. Hmm. Okay. Uh, <laughs> EA uh, has... They put out their... Um, uh, their press release about last quarter's numbers. And the problem is that, as I predicted, uh, Star Wars Old Republic is starting to drop into oblivion. And uh, they went free to play. I think we talked about it last week. But EA is, they said, this This is a ridiculous quote. It says, the disappointing results of Star Wars The Old Republic were largely offset by a powerful performance from Battlefield 3 Premium Service. Did you pay for the Battlefield 3 Premium Service? What is that part of Tor? No, no, no. Battlefield 3 is, um, it's, it's like what they did with Modern Warfare. It's like, what they do is they sell you the game, but then they can sell you the game plus all these premium things. Like, you can get these add-ons, what, you know, the day they're released or something like that, or earlier crap. Yeah. So, uh... So they're going to do that kind of free-to-play model, or? Oh, I don't know if they're going to do it with Battlefield, but what they're doing with, with Old Republic is, yeah, they're, they're making it free-to-play. Um, I don't remember if we talked about that on the last show or not, because I don't remember if it was a Wednesday or a Thursday. But, yeah, uh, Old Republic is going free-to-play, which is huge news by now. But um, there are some people that are just not going to continue playing Old Republic, myself included. I, I canceled my subscription. Unfortunately, um... Nicole and I killed the uh, Sith Heads podcast. And the funny thing about this article is that uh, EA said that in their exit interviews with people that canceled their subscriptions, they said, why are you canceling your subscription? And they said 40% of the people said that they didn't want to pay for the content. Well, of course not, because there is nothing to do when you hit level 50. Yeah. So I don't, I, don't, I don't know if this is just some BS answer or what, or maybe it's just a, as, as we said... Um, uh, just be, they have no friggin' idea. They don't. You know, it's, it, this sounds like they're grasping at straws and just any old game. Uh, that game came out and had a lot of players. That That's clearly the reason. <laughs> well, for a while, they kept touting the fact that they were the most successful MMORPG launch ever. Well, they were. They Long. were. Yeah, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with that, but... <laughs> That's all they were grasping on, and you know, while people were canceling their subscriptions left and right. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, good job on that. Yeah, I know. Uh, you like making faces in your games? Maybe. Can I do it now? <laughs> you can now in EverQuest 2. Ah, oh, yes. I haven't tried this yet. Have you tried this? No, I need to. Um, I need to reinstall EverQuest 2. Okay. <laughs> Uh, uh, Sony Online Entertainment put in something called SOE mode. And what it does is if you have a camera hooked up to your PC, while you're playing EverQuest 2, your character's face will mimic what your face is doing. If you've seen like the Logitech, um, like the, 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 I don't know what they're called, but. And uh, software that comes with the camera. That, yeah, uh, the masks. Kind of yeah, it's kind of like um, photo booth where it either it can replace your background or it can um, grab a hold of your you know it can detect where your face is and and put a hat on or something like Google yeah. Hangouts a little bit similar to that. But then there are other things where it'll look at your face and it'll put an alien on screen and your and the alien will have the facial features that you're doing. So if you go ah like you know open your mouth, the alien will open its mouth. Well, that technology is now in EverQuest too. So if you want to, if you're role playing, uh, you can do that. <laughs> yeah, you go. Now you have it. You're well. I want to give this thing a shot. I do too. But it also makes me think like I'm going to need to have some crazy control over my face when I'm playing because I'm pretty sure that when I'm playing, I do a lot of dumb crap or probably make a lot of dumb faces that I'm not realizing, mm -hmm. you know, if you're really stressed out in an instant and you're just like, yeah, ever. And then somebody's like looking at your face and then, <laughs> oh, 
I wonder if she's having a hard time or not. Oh, uh, well, I saw you were pissed. You were pissed. You put your head down. You were pissed because the healer wasn't doing their job. I, I, yeah. No, I'm not mad. Why would I be mad? <laughs> I think this is going to be good for role players, and that's it. Yeah, right. Exactly. You can't end all your sentences with a smiley face anymore and have that be it. Does that work for you? No. I know somebody who does that all the time where he just like he'll say something really offensive and then put a smiley face at the end and then I'm like that doesn't fix what you just said that's like saying with all due respect you're a total douchebag you know smiley so face saying all due respect at the beginning of that doesn't really fix it just like putting a smiley face doesn't really you know band-aid that but whatever <laughs> oh yeah or oh yeah Oh yeah, or oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know how it's pronounced. This uh, this is an open source gaming machine that has a Kickstarter fund, and <laughs> I gotta say, oddly enough, the um, the Kickstarter fund was only asking for nine hundred fifty thousand dollars, and they wound up getting eight point five million. I know. Stop giving them money, people. Jeez. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a little iffy about this. I think the reason why is because I, I was saying this on Twitter today is that if I was younger and I had more time to play with something like this, I would probably be all over it. But now that I'm older and I've got a job and the podcast and a family and everything, I really don't have time to tinker with an open source gaming machine. True, true. So I think that it's great that this is happening. I think it's... Um, I think for the people that want to fund it and want to use it and want to play it, I think it's great. But for me, I just want to pop the disc in and just start playing. Yeah, no, I'm I'm super glad it exists. Um, I would like to get one and play with it, but I think I'm probably in the same boat where I'm like, I don't know where I would find the time and I don't know. And the other thing is that I've been playing with Linux for a long time. Like I go back to the days of Minix on floppies. Uh, when I was in college. So I'm familiar with Linux. But as anybody knows that has played with Linux for a period of time, sometimes just stuff doesn't work. And you have to either wait for drivers or you have to wait for someone to figure it out or you got to take time figuring it out yourself. I just, I don't have time for that anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I totally agree. So, um, pretty much been my experience with Linux. Has it? Well, yeah, if you don't have the time to... Um, either figure it out, troubleshoot it, or, or build it yourself, then um, you should just pay for another operating system. <laughs> well, that, the, the very first piece, because I was a Mac head for a long time, the very first PC that I put together was specifically for Linux because I was watching the screensavers or, or whatever with Leo years ago. So I buy this machine and I specifically bought a, um, an Ethernet card that was supposed to be compatible with Linux. It said it was compatible with Linux. I slapped the thing in, I installed the operating system, I think it was Red Hat or Slackware, or, or, or maybe they're the same thing, I don't even remember, it's been so long. Um, and it says, nope, can't detect your video, Your um, it can't detect your network card, would you like to go out to the internet and grab the latest drivers? I'm like, sure, why don't you give that a shot? Go see you can find. <laughs> And then, the, and then the next time I tried installing uh, Linux, it had a problem with my video card where I couldn't get over 640 by 480, mm. no matter what I did. Uh, Why would more pixels than that? What? Why would you need more pixels than that? I Clearly, don't know. that. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, my uh, my experience with Linux is just that you know it, it, I don't care anymore. Well. You know what you might care about if you were trying to get a friend to play pandas with you. Oh, what? They're not going to be able to use their scroll of resurrection reward on that panda. Oh, no. Why not? All right. Oh, well. So what were we were talking about scroll of resurrection? Uh, where scroll did I get of resurrection. Off? So, yeah. So Blizzard's down 1 million subscribers. Probably. 
probably thinking a lot of them are going to come back with uh, Mists of Pandaria. Mm -hmm. But lo and behold, if you plan on doing Scroll of Resurrection with your buddy, they will not be able to use one of the key rewards, the level any character to 80 mm -hmm. reward, will not be applicable to monks or pandas who have not chosen their faction yet. Right. Uh, I think they did this with Worgen the last time, didn't they? I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. I vaguely um, remember something like that. But maybe. Maybe. All right. Um, mm. All right. Moving on. We we have any feedback? Well, we have one. I'm not going to read the whole thing on air because it's quite a long email. But we got one from Phaser Fire, mm -hmm. your buddy. <laughs> um, he says he just listened to the first episode and uh, is a big fan, you know, of everything geeky and nerdy. And uh, wants to know why uh, Starman is telling him to brush his teeth at the end of the episode. Oh, yes. I, I put in a little thing at the end. A little secret message at the uh, at the end of uh, episode one. Yeah, and Phaser Fire did his homework and uh, sent it in to us. So good job, Phaser Fire. Yeah. All right. Our Geek of the Week. You picked this one. Uh, do I have any music for this? Let's find something. I don't know. I don't have any uh, music. We're gonna have to come up with something. Okay. Well, um, I don't have anything. Anyways, um, this week's geek of the week is NASA. All of it. All of NASA. <laughs> All of NASA. That's right. Uh, for everything that they've done, everything that they're going to do, and I gotta say, I hope you guys get funding again because I was really upset that the space shuttle is, is mothballed. Yeah, their budgets keep getting cut year after year, and and look, I mean, the Curiosity cost a lot of money, but that's the culmination of multiple you know years budgets. But still, like, look where it got us, and look what we can accomplish, like crazy stuff like the Sky Crane, sure. um, you know, stuff we sh shouldn't be giving up on, um, and especially uh, Mohawk NASA guy. Mm. So. <laughs> We need people like NASA. We we need an organization that's dedicated to understanding what it's going to take to get us from point A to point B and then C and D and E. If we don't have people like NASA, we're never going to get off this rock the right way. We, <laughs> the right way. We might get off the wrong way. Well, the wrong way would be like the, the planet blows up in a billion years and, and that's it. But we need to find ways of traveling through space and discovering because there's you look at these pictures of deep space and there's like there's a picture on your screen of a hundred or so galaxies and you think of how much space is actually there and if it wasn't for people like nasa that are dedicated to figuring out how to get there mm -hmm. uh we like i said earlier we'd just be doing all our own petty stuff so yeah how are we going to make star trek a reality without nasa that's right we need NASA desperately. So Geek of the Week goes to everybody at NASA. Yay. Thanks, guys. All right. That's it for this show. If you want to go, oh, you, you do it this time. I did it last time. All right. Well, um, in case you, again, have been living under that pretty, pretty Apple rock, uh, we are the Nexicon, and we are the Nexicon on Twitter, the Nexicon on Google. On Facebook. Studios at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am Casey Queso, K A C E Y K A S O, the Casey, not the cheese on Twitter. <laughs> you are Star Mike, the Mike, not the star. That's right. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, corrections, comments, all of the above, uh, please email us. Uh, we're on iTunes. Review us, and uh, we'll be your best friend. Send us, yeah. yeah, send us awesome reviews. I don't think anybody has reviewed us yet. Nope. I don't think so either. So, yeah, until next week. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.